Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Brian Great. And we had uh, a longer session, but this is the part where I asked him to come up with some questions for me. And this is that. Uh, thanks, sponsors, Tops, Panini, Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Hug to Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So as I said, Brian was over here. And so we had we eye to eye sitting across the table with each other. We talked about a couple of other things that have already been released. And then we just kept going. I said, Brian, perhaps you have a question for me. And knowing Brian, he's never at a loss of words. And so he had some interesting things he wanted to question, but it's kind of a dialogue. It's prolific. So even when he's asking me the question to respond, there's a lot of back and forth in there. So I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed it. So here it is. All right. This is exciting because you're one of my idols in the business, for real. When I grew up coming in your store, I looked up to what you guys did and how you approached business really helped mold how I thought about things. So this is really fun to be able to put you on the hot seat mm -hmm. because I, your opinion has always meant so much to me, even though early on I didn't get the direct interaction. I appreciate the fact I can have that. If now. I'd have been in the store when you were buying those bird magic. You Dr. would have cut Jay, me off. We would have put a, a picture on the door. Yeah. Limit one per month instead of one per hour yeah, whatever you were for the, for the as soon as we put them out they put like a little plastic box of five magic bird uh dr j rookies up there whatever it was and they had them at eight dollars <laughs> so i came in about all five and then i think it was hl in the store whoever it was it was HL. We'll put five more out and mark them up to 10 yeah. then i'd come in and buy the five at 10 then he'd mark put three more out at 12 and i'd buy them at 12 then he put them out at 20 and I buy them at 20. Yeah. Finally, I quit around 30. Yeah. That's when I quit buying them. But it was just funny because, again, I'm not, not so much in that store. Not because funny. Not you funny. guys had great stuff. And it was like, but you're also your strategy up. Okay. You don't have to blow out all your cards. It was a great strategy. Right. But you thought, beat. You didn't beat me. You beat one third of me. Because I was only uh, one third. You no, couldn't be there every minute. I didn't have a majority. And trust me, I bought one, Wilson Alvarez too. That didn't work okay, okay, okay. Okay. But so, so, so here's something interesting, interesting to me going on in the marketplace. And I got to hear from someone old school how you view this. I don't even want to say card restoration, but like card preparation for grading or for selling. We see Kurt's card here and these guys who like whatever substances they use to make a card really look its best. Sometimes they're dipping it and stuff. Okay. That may be different than polishing. I don't know what it is. Where is your threshold? Like when you think about trading cards versus any other asset where people have the same question to you, what is the tolerance for what you should be able to do to a card to make it look its best and not cross the line to alteration. And then part two is, is there anything really wrong with alteration, even though we've got this in our mind that there is, or do we overemphasize the negative aspects of alteration or restoration? First of all, this problem would not be as big a problem if the price differentials for a given Amen. card were not so stretched out of shape from the highest to the lowest and where do altered cards fit in that if there was condensing of the price uh, that crime would not be worth it and, mm -hmm. and some of them i think are crimes it's an academic discussion brian we can gripe about it but if it's not detectable i breathed on the card. but you saw the wimbanyana card this week where the guy got a psa 10 on the one of one wimbanyana is worth a million dollars and then after he gets the card while he's standing at psa he says thank you kurt's card care for making this possible because the guy did something to the card to make sure that it showed its best whatever something is yep. He bragged that it had been made beautiful. It, however, they made it beautiful. It, it, it might be that he has uh, Kurt's car chair for life with that explicit endorsement that's nebulous. We don't even know what he did. And I'm not saying I don't but agree that if we can't detect it. Okay. Because it does have trim cards. But PSA right here, said we can't detect it. I mean, honestly, they can't detect trimmers a lot of times because the card measures correctly. Like, it, I, that was it, a problem at Beckett early. I'll say Beckett I, grading early. They were cutting uncut sheets. No. And you know what these geniuses were doing? They were cutting the cards too big because then. Grading would grade it them when they were too big. sacrifices the next door card on the yes, sheet. I, they would I, cut them too big because then Beckett would get it and it wouldn't measure, but it measured too big. So they say, oh, it's not trimmed. It just measures too big. We don't do maximum size limitation. We only do minimum size requirement. Today, I know a lot of cards that are trimmed in holders, and they measure up because guys are flattening them and then cutting them or trimming them. So you're yeah. right. If we can't detect it, we can't hold grading card companies responsible. No, we can hold grading companies responsible for not having the latest detection equipment. And to be totally up, that's one uh, very big positive at uh, SGC and PSA connecting is that they're going to put their heads together. And, and I think PSA probably has more to share than SGC does, but SGC 
very, very established in the pre-war. And so they put their heads together and best practices of here's what these card doctors are doing and here's how we detect it. And I'd like that to spread throughout all the card graders. And I hope that my friends at BGS are sharing their knowledge because it's good for the whole industry. For sure. Okay. So for not just whether it's detectable, let's make more and more things detectable. So if it's not detectable, and then you hear a blatant shout out to somebody that's doing mm-hmm. things to take care of your cards and improve them. If you were buying stock in, in companies, you'd be buying stock in Kurt's card care. They have undetectable solutions. Let's find out what they're doing and let's be able to detect it. And then let's call it. So then the last point I have is that I want to see accurate descriptions, not just this is altered or that it's just authentic. I want some description that's explicit about what we've detected here. If it's authentic because it has a pinhole that could easily be filled in, but is not, it's still going to be authentic with a pinhole, and probably you could get a one or a two or three or something very low grade. If you fill in the pinhole, which an art restorer could easily do from the back, I want that to be caught by the grading companies. I want to make sure they catch it, and I want it to be called not just authentic, altered, but how it was altered. Can we get rid of the word altered and call it restored? Because so many other I'm industries, really, it's I okay. I don't care what you call it. Is my, my, it, I, want, I want a maximal description. If it's more, then I'd say this was, it's a 71 tops black bordered baseball Color card added. that's got one dot of color. Yeah, they had a you dot know, on one a, corner. A dot in one corner. That's different than someone who took a sharpie and, and tried to make that, that look did. black. Yeah. The and so, the card. so to be more explicit like that, then you could say, you know what, if they hadn't put that dot there, it'd be... A and four, eight point five or six. Maybe, no, it's perfect. Other. other than than one corner has some white showing. Yeah, so maybe it would have been a six with that corner because the corner may have shown a lot of white. But whatever it is, a tiny bit of white. I'm just a six is better than just saying the card's ruined because it's altered. And people assume it's the one. And so what I'm saying is, if it would have been a six without the alteration, I don't want the alteration to make it more valuable than a six. But here's okay? the question: I want it to be less than a six, but it doesn't have to be authentic cards are equal to ones. But what is okay? Like, okay, if you have a chrome card or a, met- a prison card or a leaf metal card, can you wipe off the surface with a rag? I think we both agree you can. You can take a rag and just wipe off fingerprints and stuff, sure, right? I've and never this- heard this said, but I'm going to have a new theory now, and that is that you can use, <laughs> and don't take this in a crude way, but you can't use non-bodily chemicals. So you can spit on the card. You can spit on the card. You're okay with it? Your spit. You can't use your friend's spit. <laughs> yeah. That's the friends that spit when they talk. They would be very useful. Here. They breathe but, on the card. But here's the question. They, they could be talking. So, so, you're okay, so you're okay if you spit That's on the H2O. card and wipe it down. It's not H2O, but it's close to H2O. Okay. I'm not soaking it. Just there's a little speck there. What about if there's a scratch and you eliminate the scratch with some, whether it's a rag or sandpaper or whatever. I don't know what people use. But with a some microfiber device, cloth. A microfiber cloth. No, a micro- is it okay to remove a scratch? It doesn't remove the scratch. But let's say they are removing scratches the same way you take a scratch out of a car. No, but that, that's filling it in with something. I'm against that because that's a non-bodily fluid. That's a chemical additive. Kurt has his own special stuff that you get his formula. So without, say without telling is, you where this comes from, that, what if a manufacturer, let's say when the player signs cards, they stack the cards, but the ink wasn't dry, so the ink gets on the back of the previous card. What if a manufacturer wipes off the back with some kind of ink remover? Is that an altered card if the manufacturer does it before it's put in the back? Because I know for a fact this has happened in the industry. I won't give examples, but I can give examples. If it is not detectable, then what's the argument? That you can probably detect. No one just knows to look for it because no one's looking on the back for ink removal. The ink removal is probably done with some kind of alcohol. Yes, kind of thing. which is not bodily fluid. And a little Q-tip or something. And it's something. not a bodily fluid. And they should detect it. And the card manufacturer could say... We just want to let you know, grading companies, this is what was done. Or the whole world, they could tell, if they're really being transparent. We know that's not going to happen because as a former CEO of a card company, transparency, while we like to feign transparency. Levels of transparency. We like to feign transparency. We don't like to be transparent. Levels of transparency. So here's the question. Are we making too big a deal about alteration, restoration? Because you look in the comic book industry. It's not too big a deal when the prices are so different. Correct. But we can't change how the market is irrationally priced. Again, there's no reason you can have 10 nines for the price of one. We can. We can. And it's happening. I believe the price of authentic is increasing. It is. I'm talking about the discrepancy comes. And the reason for this wanting to repair every little tiny micro issue is that 110 is worth nines. 
in some cases. Exactly. That's, that's a problem. problem. That's there's never a that's world. the main problem. There's never going to be a world where you can convince me that I wouldn't rather have crime does 100, pay. 100, crime does pay. Seventy five Derek Jeter PSA nines. There's only a pop of five hundred. Yeah. Seventy five of those versus one ten. There's no way you're going to tell me not to take seventy five nines. I've been around too long. This too is going to change and pass like it always does. But the question is, should we have a separate grading scale like we do for comics? Because if you send a comic to CGC, they're going to grade it and say, you have 10 down and you have restored 10 down. And restored books, they actually offer restoration services. You can send your book to CGC and say, can you press it for me, please? The grading company will actually press the book for you or their subsidiary will actually press the book for you. Think about the potential market. If PSA will take the crease out of your card for you. Now, when we slab it afterward, we're going to slab it as a restored nine or restored eight. Because here's the thing. Personally, and I think you're going to agree with me on this. I'm, I'm betting a 52 mantle with bleach borders that is clean, that shows beautifully, that's got restoration on the corners and bleach borders, but it's still the original card. I think you'd pay more for that than a three or a four. If it shows like a nine. Brian, you're justifying the massive increase over the last few years in prices for quote unquote eye appeal cards within any grade. And so authentic, altered restored, whatever, when it presents like a high grade from arm's length, then you're going to get more than you are than a one. And I think that's for good reason. But that's resolving this. So if it's the eye appeal of something that is slightly off-centered, you wouldn't take the chance to shave the fat side if you thought it was only going to increment you just a little bit. That it already is sharp corners and looks good. The risk reward is not greater. I want to increase the risk by greater detection, and I want to decrease the reward. But, and then the bad guys go find something. But collectors else. are getting. But I'm home, fine. Though. I'm the, fine with your double scale. Of I think that's critical. Here's the pop report for because the authentic altered shouldn't all go at the far left uh, in the box of like this junk. Yeah. No, I think there's some really good cards. That are, I'd rather have nice looking cards. And I'm buying the cards. Because guess what? We bought cards before there were holders. Yes. So we're going to want to buy cards even when they're in holders. Holders have been a great thing for the hobby in one sense that it's given us some watchdog, even though they're not perfect. They've given us a watchdog to help us make good choices. Can you imagine the fraud without them today? If there were no grading companies, it would be insane the amount of fraud now. The, The joke is the most famous card in the hobby, the most valuable card, possibly the, the Wagner. But the trimmed Wagner, card 00001 Mm -hmm. from PSA, all the other Wagners sell for millions of dollars. And I think very few of them are restored because they're just so valuable in in the natural condition. And so I want other cards to be like that. I I don't want to take the chance to restore. The man in the house.